All right, so we determined that we don't want to use a diode load when uh, make, trying to make a high gain amplifier, so let's instead look at using a PMOS current source as a load. So here, we're going to tie a PMOS transistor to the supply. Remember that the bulk of the PMOS transistor is also always tied to the supply in a bulk CMOS process. We're going to hook the gate of the PMOS transistor M2 up to a bias voltage VB. And then we're going to use an NMOS transistor as our transconductor where we put the input on the gate, take our output on the drain. So this is a common source amplifier again. Now we're going to start using a notation where we are going to look at the resistance looking up from the load and the resistance looking down from the load. And we're going to say that the R total is equal to R up in parallel with R down. So in this case, the resistance looking up into the PMOS transistor, R up, is equal to RO2. And the resistance looking down into the NMOS transistor is equal to RO1. So we can say that the voltage gain is equal to, and we know that our transconductor device is this device, and we know that the big GM is equal to little gm1 because we don't have any impedance in the source. So we can say that our voltage gain AV is equal to big gm times R total or minus gm1 times RO1 in parallel with RO2. Now we know that RO1 and RO2 should be very big. We desire them to be infinite. They of course aren't, but they're very large. And so we can see that the gain is very big. The only challenge with this circuit is that we require a VB, so we have to generate that bias voltage in some way, shape, or form. And most likely we'll do that with an on-chip circuit, not just have a voltage source tied to it. So we can see that using a current source load gives us a very large gain. We expect RO1 and RO2 to be very large, so we, the product of GM1 times RO1 in parallel with RO2 will be very large. So we'll look at one more thing in this lesson, and of course we'll do some examples in class. But the last thing that we're going to look at is what we call a cascode circuit. And what we're going to do with a cascode circuit is stack devices to try to improve the impedance, or try to increase the impedance. All right, so what we're going to do now is take a stack of NMOS transistors we're going to put two of them in series with one another from drain to source. We're going to tie the top transistor to gate to a, a voltage VB or a V bias voltage. We're going to tie the bottom transistor, that will be the input of our circuit. And remember that both of these devices have a resistance associated with their channel, RO2 and RO1 respectively. So remember if we want to find the total impedance looking into the drain of the top transistor, we'll call this R out. From inspection, we know that R out is going to equal RO2 times 1 plus GM2 plus GMB2 times whatever resistance we see that's tied to the source. Well, in this case, the resistance tied to the source of M2 is RO1. 
so we can put R01 here. Now, what we might note is that R02 and R01 are probably approximately equal. And the other thing is that this GM2 plus GMB2 times R01 term is much larger than 1. And so we can simplify this and approximate it as being equal to GM2 plus GMB2 times R01 times R02. Now further, we know that GMB is usually much, much less than GM. And we also might note that since we have the same current flowing through these two devices, and they're probably very similar size, that the ROs are roughly equal. And so oftentimes when you see a cascode circuit, we approximate the output, the, the, the resistance at the drain of the circuit as being approximately equal to the GM of the transistors times the output resistance of the transistors, assuming that the GM it, uh, uh, and ROs are approximately equal. Now what we notice here is that this is a very large resistance. In our single circuit, in our uh, single um, transistor circuit that we just looked at above, remember the output resistance was just RO1 in parallel with RO2. Here the output resistance is GM RO squared. So it's GM times RO bigger than uh, it was before. So this is a big impedance, which is good. It will give us a lot of gain. Now, what's the cost? Everything that we do in engineering where we get something uh, good, we usually have to give up something else uh, th that we desire. And the cost is I now need a larger voltage at the drain to keep both devices saturated. All right, so we'll stop there uh, for active loads. We'll pick up with current sources in the next lesson. And in class next time, we'll try and solve some examples of circuits using active loads and cascodes. And, and we'll try and do a couple with multiple stages so that we see how to handle multiple stages. And again, we are always going to favor inspection analysis. So remember and bear in mind that you need to remember how to use those formulas.